Great here. Welcome to a new series that I'm calling Gone Rogue. This is where I play a variety of roguelike games, and I'm not talking about the, the modern roguelike games like uh, Binding of Isaac or Enter the Gungeon or uh, FTL. Those are all modern reinterpretations of the roguelike genre. I'm talking more about the, the, the classical roguelikes. These are the, the roguelikes that are, if not based on the original rogue or hack, or Moria, uh, they are the the tile-based, turn-based, permadeath, usually high fantasy, but not always, uh, uh, video games where you're basically, it's just a dungeon crawl. It's 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 the the fun combat that you would get from pen and paper board uh, or not board games, pen and paper role-playing games, but uh, with the computer taking on all of the mechanics. But it is definitely turn-based, so. You can sit back and think about what you're going to do. Not that that's ever helped me. Just to give you an idea of uh, how interesting this genre can be, one of the games that I have played, uh, in uh, one of the roguelikes I've played, is called Angband. Um, and this is literally, I'm not joking, a game that I've played off and on for at least 20 years, if not longer and I've never beaten it. <laughs> so, I don't know if I'm going to beat these at all, but uh, I'll give it a try. So today, uh, what I plan on starting off with is with Tome, Tales of Majael. Uh, this is a game which was originally a, a an Angband variant, uh, which means it was, uh, it, it had the the token lore and the, the token races and everything, but they actually created their their own universe, their own lore, um, when they moved further and further away from the Angband engine. I'm getting that wrong. Definitely go check it out for yourself. Anyway, uh, so let's get straight into it. And I'm by no means an expert uh, at Tome or any roguelike, really. Uh, in fact, on Tome, I've only got 21 hours in, uh, according to Steam. And believe it or not, for a rogue like that's pretty low. So I'm going to make a lot of mistakes. There's going to be a lot of deaths and a lot of fun, as it were. So first off, difficulty. I'm going to start off at normal because, like I said, I've never beaten the rogue like, so we'll go with normal at first. Permadeath. Um, Tome lets you have infinite lives. Is this infinite lives? Yeah, it's infinite lives. Whatever. Adventure gives you uh, extra lives depending on how many levels you've gotten. And then Roguelike, which is one life, you die unless the, you figure out some way in-game to gain more lives that, that would be available at any level. And I'm definitely going to play Roguelike because this is a Roguelike game. Starting up, I normally go... Uh, at least on my Angban runs, I love my Dwarven Paladins, so I'm going to pick a Dwarf. Uh, first, dwarves are good at strength and willpower. So let's look at uh, wilder. We'll look for something that is good at strength and willpower. Wormick are fighters who have learned how to mimic some of the aspects of the dragons. They have access to talents normally belonging to the various kinds of drakes. The most important stats are strength and willpower. So I'll be a dwarf and a Wormick. Uh, Never go with the door of a female. Okay, let's get a random name. Asmiro. So this is going to be the first uh, first run with Asmiro, the Dwarven Wormick. Hopefully I won't die before I get out of the, uh, the basic level. So let's see, what kind... First off, I'm going to get rid of all of these points. I hate how it automatically assigns. Uh, I know there's an option where I can switch that out, but I forgot to turn it on. So let's see, what do I want to do? Um, I think it would be good to pick one aspect, uh, one Drake aspect, and stick with it. Uh, let's see, Pure Lightning, Venom Drake, Glob of Acid, Fire Drake, Wind. Uh, actually, I like Wind Drakes. Um, what this does, your your first power in the... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, not Wind Drake, Sand Drake. Um, 
Attack the target for 206 nature weapon damage. If the attack brings your target below 14% life or kills it, you can try to swallow it, killing it automatically, regaining life in equilibrium depending on its level. I get to eat things. Let's go with that. Let's see, combat veteran. Uh, let's see, shield offense, two-handed assault. Uh, I'm going to forego shields. I'm definitely going to go with two-handed. So let's pick up the basic two-handed uh, weapon. Let's see, this requires let's see, stamina cost. So we want to get the stamina regeneration here. Is this? Uh, yeah. Your combat focus allows you to regenerate stamina faster. So we'll pick that up. Okay, that's our three class points. Category points lets us unlock another category. We don't have any of those. So we're not going to spend any. Generic points, these are... If these are the class... Uh, skills over here. These are the uh, skills that are based on your race, I believe, is the best way to look at it. I could be a little wrong on that. So, or if not your race, at least you have racial and, and well, they're generics, generic categories. So, let's see. Meditate on your link, equilibrium, the mental save. I'm not going to worry about that. Wild fungus. This is a s sustain. With a myriad of tiny, nearly invisible healing fungi, any regeneration effect active on you will have its duration increased by one turn. I like that. I like going for tanking and healing. Uh, because of that, I, I'm also going to pick up extra armor training, so I can I can wear in, uh, uh, shields. No, at level one, it allows heavy mail armor, gauntlets, helms, and heavy boots. Level two is shields. Level 3 is Massive Plate Armor, so I'm going to start picking that up. Let's see. For our stats, I want to pick another point in Strength, so I can yeah, pick up uh, another point in Armor to get Shields. I'm going to get 1 in Willpower and then another one. Uh, actually, let's get up to 20 Willpower, um, because 20 points is where your secondary... Uh, your second level of your first talent and your secondary talents unlock. So getting this up to 20 quicker will help. So I believe that is it. Do you accept these changes? Yes, I do. As Miro, you are a member of the proud but selective race of dwarves, hailing from the Dwarven Empire, the Iron Throne. <laughs> you have been sent to investigate the old fortress of Reknor, which has been overrun by orcs. Upon arriving, most of your team got killed, and now you must crawl back to the Iron Council and report what you saw there. Only, only you and Norgan, a fellow dwarf berserker, have survived, but the orcs will not let you go easily. You have sworn that once you reach the Iron Council safely, you will take on a life of adventure, looking for fame and treasures of old, away from all these orcs. So, here we are. I'm not touching the keyboard. Nothing happens. That is a roguelike, turn-based. So, if I go into options, the other, the other aspect, and I just want to uh, show that this is actually the case in Tome. Uh, let's see, mouse cursor, no. I want video option. Uh, no. Game options? Yes, where is it? Do, 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 do. It's under UI, I believe. I will show lore. Ah, hmm. oh, rats. Anyway, what I was trying to show is that this is definitely tile-based. So as I move, the enemies get to move, uh, my ally gets to move, but I'm moving one square at a time. And I just move into the enemies to attack them. Now the one thing that you do want to do with uh, roguelikes is you want to try to position yourself where you're never attacked by more than one enemy at a time, if at all possible. Actually, let's get this infusion. Use there it is. Let's get that regen going. This is where the uh, the fungus helps out. Now the other thing that uh, Tome does is if I press. Z, I believe it is, I will automatically 
rest, and then automatically explore the level. That way the, the tedium is kind of taken out of it. Oh, I need to turn on the uh, my sustain. There we go. There's the fungus. Okay, so it'll automatically uh, move about the level, and any time it finds anything interesting, like uh, a monster, a critter that might attack me, or um, anything on the ground, it will pause and let me decide what to do. And so I'll be making heavy use of that uh, going forward, just because it is a lot easier to... There we go. Uh, let's see, this is a... Normally I wouldn't pick up a, a white item. Anyway, as I was saying, I get so distracted when I play these. I will uh, be using that so the, the screen will move around, but basically it's just getting to the interesting parts faster. So let's take a look. Iron Battle Axe, uh, which is... I do have an Iron Battle Axe, and it's a little bit better than mine, so I'm going to use it. There we go. Oh, let's back up. Let my ally take some of the, some of the hits. There we go. Uh, no, it's not O, it's Z. There we go. I've been playing a lot of uh, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, and the auto run there, or the auto explorer is O instead of Z. Okay. Of course, the exploration here may not be the most uh, efficient, as it, I believe it goes for the nearest unknown tile. Let's see, object seen. What do I see? Dagger. Oh, longsword, don't care. Longsword is only a one-handed weapon, I'm definitely going for two-handed. And on most of these, I'm just playing whack-a-mole. What I sh ah, okay, so I got blinded. If we check the status effect over here. Uh, let's see, blinded for three turns. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to back off a bit for the three turns. Ah, well, let's just attack blindly. I hit something, hit something again. Let's try eating whatever it is in this direction. Let's... Okay. There we go. By moving behind the mouse, I got the, uh, the orc to get attacked by my, my ally. Uh, let's see if I can eat him. Ooh, 11 healing from the Orc Soldier. Nice. Let's back off. Let, uh, let my ally tank. And move along. Okay. <laughs> Linen Cloak of the Iron Throne. Gives one strength and one constitution. I like it. Go back to exploration. Oh, uh, just to show this off, here is my character screen. And as you can see, strength, dexterity, constitution, and magic, willpower, cunning. If you've ever played D&D, &D, this should, while not be identical, should be very, very, very familiar. Um, let's see what other fun things are in here. Life and stamina. Stamina is what I use for my, my special powers, or my special moves. Um, global speed and movement speed. All of these speeds are kind of interesting. Um, because in the background, what's actually happening is it isn't just one turn to one turn. Um, I don't know how Tome does it specifically, but what most roguelites do is they have uh, a, a timer in the background. So say there's like actually a hundred turns. And every 100 turns, I get to move one, and then something else with, with the same speed gets to move once in that 100 turns. 
Now there are powers where you could actually move faster. And what that does is it increases or decreases the uh, the number of those internal turns that you have to wait before you can move. So you can literally move out of sync with other things and you can move faster or slower than they do. And that becomes very powerful because it allows you to tack more, it allows you to um, just be <laughs> be awesome is what it allows. Okay, let's just uh, turn the auto back on. Let me get the mouse pointer off the screen. Red Joey to the southwest or southeast. Uh, okay, so here if I move forward, this this orc right here would get the first first attack. So this is kind of something that you do with roguelikes where you would pause and let them come to you, therefore letting you get the first attack. So if I hit 5, I'll pause one turn, he'll move forward, and then I get to attack him. Uh, I'm unable to move. Uh-oh. Wait. Okay, so hold on. Let's heal. Let's get the regen going. And there we go. I'm going to let my, there, let him take the uh, the red jelly. And let's regen again, and, okay, here's another good example. Orcs fired an arrow. Projectiles in Tome have a certain speed, so it's actually possible for me to dodge uh well, when I'm faster to dodge projectiles. There we go. And pretty soon, once everything is explored, it'll take me directly to the, uh, the stairs to the next level. And I move down generate the next level. Okay, I've earned a level, so let's spend my points. Let's get 20 into willpower. Let's put another one into strength. Let's see, class points. Okay, this would give me another 10% damage and stun for another turn. Eh. This would let me... This would give me another... 19 points, it looks like. And then another 5% on the threshold for eating them. So, why, uh, let's see. Levels in Swallow additionally raises your physical and mental criti uh, critical rate by 3%. So, yeah, let's get another into Swallow. Now, if you look here, what the, uh, let me back up and, and take this point out. And... See if I can get over to the... Okay. So, the way that this works. Willpower. 12. Uh, this says I need 14 for the next level. Um, I'm not sure what effective talent level is. Hmm. Uh, cool down. It would go from 10 to 9. Uh, attack on target would increase the 15%. Here's the 5% increase in the in the threshold. And then the uh, my crit rate would go up a little bit. Oh, I also get a little bit of physical resistance. So when I hit this, it'll go up. Let's get over there. I don't like how I can't... Okay, well, I won't move the, the pointer over. You can see what I'm, I'm saying about. So now the next next level is willpower 16. Um, cooldown drops again. I get more percentages. So it... Uh, as I level up, I need to I need to focus on getting the stats that I need for whatever skills that I want, which is kind of interesting. Let's see, increases regeneration by plus two. This is an active, which gives me more resistances. Um. Hmm. Hmm. 
when you're hitting melee, you have 15%. I actually want this talent, so I'm going to put a point into Resilience of the Dwarves. Which means I now have, on a 45 cooldown, uh, increases my armor by 9, my spell resistance by 13, and my physical by 13. For 8, eight turns, it increases with my constitution. So, all points spent. Let's move on. Um, let's try eating that. There, got my uh, my ally in on the on the action. Okay, normally I wouldn't be caught dead wearing a mind woven linen wizard hat, but since I have no head head armor at all, this gives me a little bit of defense, a little bit extra on um, uh, mental crit chance, which I'm not using. I'm basically wearing it for the one point of armor. Okay, let him come to me. Stun him. And then eat him. Nom nom nom. Ah, this start always messes me up just a little bit because I have, I do have that, uh, that ally that's helping me. Who is this guy? Cut purse, just, just someone. Okay, well, let's armor up a bit. Oh, we could eat him, couldn't stun him. There we go. Uh, does this give me any? Nah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna wear that. Let's get that mouse pointer out of the way. There we go. Gained a little bit of health off of that. And actually, I want to move this since this is a uh, defensive skill. I normally group my offensive skills over on the, uh, the earlier keys and then the uh, defensive on the later keys. Let's wait for him to come to me. Oh great, he's regening. Let's get my uh, my guy in on this. Let's regen and swallow. There we go. I'm used to being by myself, so whenever I've got the, a follower, I get kind of distracted on who's who. Okay, it's another orc. So there, since we were two, uh, two tiles away, if I move forward one, then he moves forward one, then I get the first hit. So, bash him. Uh, did I get him? No, the other guy got him. That's another one of these. Let's back off. No, I can't. There. Ah, there we go. Bash him. Go for the eat. River's Fury. Okay, it looks like a unique. Let's see how it compares. So, uh, a white quality battle axe or a yellow, which requires a strength of 12. Let's see. Gives accuracy. Damage melee, 15, plus 15% 15 cold, so that's on top of its base power, which is much better than my, my axe. Gives me cold resistance, um, which I can re uh, resist 10% of the damage. Gives me extra spell power, but I'm not casting spells. 
There it is, movement speed, plus 10%. So with this, I will actually move slightly a bit faster than everything else around me. It also gives me a power down at the bottom. It can be used to activate a talent of tidal wave. And this basically, all of the descriptions there, a wall of water rushes out from the caster with an initial radius of one, increasing by one per turn to a maximum radius of three. And it does damage and pushes things away from me. So I definitely want to wield this and then there's my uh my new power which i'm going to move further back the special weapon powers on the high cooldowns i move them away because those are going to change frequently where the earlier buttons i want to have as my my racial powers since uh there we go now let's eat that guy there Anyway, so my my personal powers I want to keep on the low numbers because I'm going to use them more frequently. Oof. It's taking forever to heal now. Oh, heal passively, I should say. So, this is what the tidal wave looks like. Whoosh. <laughs> And then, nom nom nom. Uh, I hit O again. There we go. Uh, oops. I missed something. I still missed something. I need to turn on the regeneration, turn on my healing back off so my guy can uh, tank a bit, eat that guy, there we go, and a ring, warrior's copper ring, oh wait, I gotta pick it up first, armor of six, and plus three strength, definitely will take that, Wait, what was this? Hateful Iron Mace of Massacre. I'll pick it up and sell. Basically, white quality I leave on the ground, green quality I normally pick up to, to sell in town. At least until I start getting encumbered and then I might bump it up to higher qualities. There. Finally got close enough. Let's actually heal up before we uh, auto. There. Ooh. Ah, that's not good. go heal up I think there's one more level after this worms you generally want to uh take them out real quick because they replicate although there is a method of farming them where you let them replicate and then uh, you you kill the replications over and over and over again so now we've got another level let's take a look let's see I need level 4 for the next yeah, I'm not using a lot of stamina base so I'm not going to pick that up yet let's just go for more swallow I mean we are a wormic after all Okay, this gives me, is based off of strength, and gives me increased physical power and weapon damage when using sword, axes, or maces, which I'm definitely doing. Can't get hurt if there's nothing around to hurt me. 
Actually, let's pick up a strength, a constitution, which is going to give me extra life and a little bit extra on the physical saves, and more willpower. Something hit from mind. I don't think I can see it yet. Ah, I do believe that's the boss. Let me take a look. Yep, Bro Talk the Reaver. So I'm going to back off. Um, armor up. Hit my regen. Bash him. Heal. Let's see. He's down to 27%. Now he's at 11. Let's try to eat him. There we go. And he always drops. In in Tome, your your race determines your beginning dungeon, but you always get the Rod of Recall, which lets you uh, return to the top of the dungeon. And then uh, the other stuff is uh, random. There we go. This is a green. So let's take a look at our loot. Okay, so right now I've got a Brass Lantern, which gives me a light radius of 2 and nothing. A Summertime Fail gives me light resistance, light radius of 4, healing modification of plus 10, and it can call light. So the healing modification, I think the more he it helps my healing, but here, the light radius. So this is a light radius of 2, and if I wear this, I should have... There. Now that I took the step to update it, now I got a much better vision. Okay, reinforced iron. Let's see what else is in there. I don't care about any of these. Grounding leather, belt of the giant. Physical gives me more physical power, some more resistances, and size category increase. <laughs> I'll be a giant dwarf, which means I'll be normal. See, this gives me damage resistances, which is better than mind power, which I'm never going to use. It's still a silly hat, but I'll take it. Uh, actually, Iron Helm of Dexterity. More armor, more dexterity, and I believe dexterity gives me... What does dexterity give me? It says down the corner. Increases accuracy, defense, chance to shark off critical hits, and your damage with light weapons. Well, I'm not using a light weapon, but uh, I'll wear it for the armor. Worth wearing the boots. Okay. Brass Lantern of Clarity, which I'm going to stick with the fail. And I exit the dungeon into the Iron Council. This is the uh, tome gives you quests to kind of guide you on what to do next. A lot of roguelikes don't do that, but I kind of like it. Um, I think everyone gets into the darkness after the initial dungeon. From below, it devours. This is a dwarf specific dungeon. And Norgan leaves us, and I get an achievement. Squadmate, look like escape from from Rechnor alive with your squadmate Norgan. So here's the starter dwarf town, and what I can do is each of these is a shop, as you can see, and I can uh, basically sell things, reprovision, and this is why I was picking up all of the greens was just to get more money. Initially, I thought that uh, I had to have the the uh, shop type match what I was selling, uh, but then I found out it actually doesn't matter. Well, 
at least at the lower levels, it doesn't matter. And the main thing is that uh, it'll pay up to 25 gold. So if I have something that's really special, it will give me more money for it. Note, I cannot sell the anything that I have equipped or the Rod of Recall. I'm going to stick with the Trident. And let's go to the heavier armor. Let's see what I can afford here. See, I've got 50 gold. I could get... Oh, I don't have armor training 3 yet. So I could get the Prismatic Iron Mail Armor of Fire Resistance. Which gives me fire, light, and darkness. And more armor and more defense. Yes? Yes. So let's grab that. I'll go back into the shop and sell my rough weather armor. Yeah, nothing there I want. It's in here. Oh, pickaxe. But don't have enough gold. I'll have to grab a pickaxe later or hope that I find one. I believe this is the exit to the t uh, to the world. Yep. And inscriptions and stones. Light weapons. Yeah. So, here's the second dungeon, for the dwarves at least. This is... let's go to the journal. From below it devours. Your escape from Ragnar got your heart pounding and your desire for wealth and power increased tenfold. Maybe it's time for you to start an adventurer's career. Deep below the Iron Throne Mountains lies the Deep Bellow. It has been long sealed away, but still, from time to time, adventurers go looking, go there looking for wealth. None that you know has come back yet, but you did survive Ragnar. You are great. I'm great. Uh, and of course, <laughs> tumps me up with five mobs and uh, not a lot of places to hide. Anyway, that's going to do it for the first little bit. Uh, next time, we're going to take on this dungeon and see where it takes us. I hope you enjoyed the video. Have fun, and see you later.